Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse Planis. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast today. We have a wonderful show entitled Prison Outreach. Setting the captives free. One thing we do here at Jesse the Plants Ministries is reach people, change lives one soul at a time. We say it all the time. We have a wonderful man I want you to watch in just a minute called Mike Barber. And it's through his prison ministry that we support that we get people saved. And we go in there and preach in the prison with Mike. But he's such a blessing. And I want you to listen to him as he talks about what God has called him to do and called us to support him and be a blessing. Get ready. You're going to be blessed. People are going to be There are fewer places darker than a prison cell. But even in the darkest places, there is light. Believing that no person is unreachable, Jesse Duplantis Ministries has partnered with Mike Barber Ministries for over 20 years. By reaching out to prisons, we are making a difference. Men and women are finding forgiveness, meaning, and purpose. Through Mike Barber, we are seeing the most broken people awaken to new hope as their lives are being transformed and made whole. Because of this vital outreach, those behind bars are experiencing the love and joy of Jesus, and darkness is being replaced with the promise of the good news of the gospel. Together, we are reaching people and changing lives, one soul at a time. I had a dear friend that invited me to prison and he kept inviting me for about a year and a half. He was doing a prison right out my back door south of Houston and 20 minutes away and I told myself, well, it can't get any easier than this. I said, okay, I said, you go do your thing for an hour and I'll talk football with the prison officials and you go do your thing. And because I told him, I said, I'm not talking, I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just getting you off my back, I'm going with you and I'm getting out of there in an hour's time. Well, I went into the gym and all of a sudden, I hear over the loudspeaker of the whole prison, number 86 of the Houston Oilers is in the gym. And so I'm over there in the corner, you know, and like, here's where all the inmates coming in. And I purposely have my back to them, and I'm talking to the prison official. Well, I hear them all coming in, you know, and I'd kind of do this, and they're waving at me like that. <laughs> and I'd kind of go, yeah, yeah, you know, and I keep talking. And I did that three or four times, and I made a huge mistake. And this is literally the beginning of the Mike Barber Ministries, is I looked into their eyes one too many times. Wow. And I realized the difference between them and me is they got caught. When it was over with, I walked over to the officer to where all the inmates came in. I said, sir, is this way they're going out? He said, yeah. I said, could I shake their hand on the way out? Here they all came in line and they got excited that I was standing there waiting on them. You know, I'm raised redneck East Texas boy. The first inmate, I went to shake his hand and before I knew it, he had his arms around my neck. And I said, well, wait a minute, we don't do that. I don't do that. Right. Well, the rest of the 199, every one of those guys hugged my neck and I let them. And from that day, and for my last six years in the NFL, as soon as my football season was over with, I was in a prison somewhere. I love going cell to cell. I like to go and reach the tough guys. Because if you can reach the tough guys, you can change the whole atmosphere, you know, inside that prison. And atmosphere is my favorite word. And you do that by attitude. Attitude is 100% of life. That was 38 years ago, and we've walked into our 33rd year of full-time prison ministry, and it's all because a friend wouldn't take no for an answer. And yet, I can honestly tell you, I wouldn't trade places with absolutely nobody. I'm the most blessed man in the whole world. My wife and I, were a team. God's glory, and we let inmates know all the time, men and women, you can be, you're in prison, the prison doesn't have to be in you. That's a choice that you can make today. What's the story behind these dolls? They were made by the ladies on death row in the state of Texas. Jesse came to the Mountain View unit where death row is yes, years ago, and how that took place is uh, in one of my visits on death row, Francis here, young lady, 
on death row, just put her hands together, I'll never forget it. And she says, oh, Mike, I got one big favor. And I said, what's that, Francis? She goes, what would be the possibility of getting Jesse Duplantis here? I just love him. I said, well, he's a super busy man, but let me see what I can do. Fast forward, Jesse said yes, we worked out a time, and I didn't tell Francis he was coming. And that one day when he walked in on death row, she lit up so, so. big. Wow. And the thing about it is that I had to pull Jesse out. He was just going <laughs> to stay there and stay there. And Jesse did such an amazing job just ministering in love to them. And it just rocked her world. It was normal for her to know who Jesse Plants was from the resources, the magazine, books. Thanks to Christian television mm -hmm. and material, which we would help get the right material into them. And so she, along with the other girls, they were all very, very familiar with Jesse and his impact. They'd watch him on Christian TV mm -hmm. and read his material for Jesse to just be there. And he really wanted to be there. Mm -hmm. And that makes a big difference. And we just had a a two, two and a half hour visitation there that will always be special and can't say a thank you enough to, to Jesse. Wasn't that wonderful? Did that bless your heart? Because it certainly blessed me. I'll never forget when Mike Barber asked me to go into prison. The first thing I thought of, my God, did they remember what I did? <laughs> you know, that's it before I was saved. I was a pretty tough character before I knew the Lord Jesus Christ. But when I got born again, I read something. He said, go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Little did I realize that meant prison ministry. Now, I thought to myself, well, how am I going to get into prison ministry? I, be I began to get strong on my heart, and I got to meet Mike Barber. We became close personal friends. Him and Shanine are just wonderful people. He said, Jesse, would you come help me preach in the prisons? I said, not only will I help you preach in the prisons, but I'll start supporting you. I was financially, I'll, 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 I'll believe with you, Mike. And together we went in there and it's just such a blessing to see God take a hard character, a person who thinks that the world's done them wrong. And maybe that's true. And maybe it's not, I don't know, but change people and to see the love that Mike has for these men. It's just amazing to me. We send in our magazines. We do all kinds of different things. It's just such a blessing. And also, we went into the on death row. When I went on death row, I didn't know what to expect. Because I'm going to tell you, that was some tough women. This was in the women's ministry. It was some tough women. I'll tell you what, they wouldn't play no games with nobody. But you know what? The love of God that was shared in their hearts. They were so blessed. But what they didn't understand, they thought I was the blessing. No, no, they were blessing me more than I could ever bless them because Jesus came in their lives and saved their heart. Now, I don't care what you've done in life. That's what I love about the blood of Jesus. It doesn't cover your sin. It washes all your sin away. Thank God for that. You know what Kathy said about me as a sinner when I got saved? She said, I want to tell you something, Jesse. The father had to give Jesus a blood transfusion. He was running out of blood to wash your sin away because I was a very sinful man. But when Jesus came in my life, he changed me. Maybe you are a prisoner today and you can meet Jesus Christ right where you are. Maybe you're out of prison and you're still a prisoner because Satan is controlling you. That can change today by the power of Jesus' name. And that's what is so exciting about what God is doing through Mike Barber Ministries and it's such a blessing of the Lord. And I, I find it an honor to support him and to believe in him. He's one of my spiritual sons. And one day, Mike, I'm going to be as tall as you. At least that's what I'm believing for. Let's go back right now and learn more about this wonderful outreach because this is about the kingdom of God. And I want you to see this and you are going to be blessed. So, Mike, keep talking and bless the wonderful people watching. I was eight up with yeah. football. I mean, 24-7, thinking nothing would ever compare. But yet here I am and... A lot of wonderful memories uh, in my NFL, my 10 years, I blocked for the number one running back in the league, Errol Campbell and Eric Dickerson, and that I'd be the Houston Oilers draft choice by Bum Phillips. And my coach drank a case of beer just about every day. His language, even though he didn't mean it dirty, but he'd say the worst of the worst words in front of kids, in front of ladies, and he went into a prison with me. In that prison, I talked about the playbook. You know, for me to get on the field, he put that playbook in my hand. And he said, now, Michael, doesn't matter if you're an All-American, doesn't matter how fast you can run, how good you can catch a football. 
If you don't know what this playbook means, you'll never get on the field. So what I do, I got to the playbook. And I tie that in today. My Bible, I call the playbook to this day. And then I had a Houston Order playbook, and I compared the two to the six, 700 inmates with him sitting on the sideline over there. And when it was all said and done, he said, nobody has ever told me that you have to accept Jesus into your heart to go to heaven. He said, I'm 78 years of age, and I've just heard that from you. Long story short, we got out to the van. He says, Michael, now tell me again exactly what it takes. I picked up my Bible, and I told him, Coach, if you don't know this playbook, you can't go to heaven. You've got to accept Jesus, the author of it. And he did right there on the spot. He invited me into the NFL. I invited him to Christ, and I baptized him. And that's what I tell inmates today. Without knowing the Word of God, knowing the author of the Bible, the playbook. And I said, if you don't understand who Jesus is in your life, he will not only forgive, but he always forgets as well. And for an inmate that has no hope, that's the message right there. Absolutely. That they can have the hope that not only am I forgiven, but it's forgotten. The prison system doesn't forget. Well, of course. Corporate America doesn't forget, but God forgets as though it never happened. And it's life changing to thousands of inmates. When we convince them, he forgives and he forgets. Our ministry is about going cell to cell, volunteers. We had a volunteer that went cell to cell, shared Christ with this very violent woman, cuffs, wrists, ankles, 24 seven uh, surveillance camera, had to carry what they call a black box in their hand and hold, the whole time. If you put it down, alarm goes off. She shared Jesus Christ with that lady. Long story short, the state started using her to travel the state to do uh, testimonies in high school assemblies about what drugs will do, alcohol, the wrong crowd. Jesus got her out of prison, and today she's a millionaire in Dallas, Texas. Some super seg to God's abundant blessings, all because she received Jesus Christ. We got another guy, he's still in prison. His nickname is Animal. 14 years on death row, eight execution dates, two of those within the hour of dying. I kept going to him and going to him and sharing Christ. Years later, I'm in another unit, and there he's sitting. And I paused, and I looked at him, and I said, Animal, and he's sitting there, and he's crying. This is not death row. And he let me know. He said, all those times, Mike, that you kept coming back, you kept chipping away, you didn't give up on me. And you shared Jesus. And out of nowhere, they came to my cell. He said, to this day, I don't know why. But they took me off a death row. And God's got a plan. And 40 years later now, he's still in prison, but prison is no longer in him. And he pushes that cart that we help supply of all those spiritual tracks. And he can go anywhere in that max security prison and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all those inmates. And he is a man of God today, a preacher of the word, because he received Jesus Christ as Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we refuse to forget the forgettable. You know, Kathy, when God told us to preach the gospel to every creature, we meant all the people in prison as well. That's right. And, and so many people need Jesus Christ today. And you know, you may have a person, you may have a friend, you may have a child, someone, or an uncle or a father that may be in prison. But we go to the prisons and we do it through Mike Barber Ministries, and he's such a blessing of the Lord. We support him and we believe in him greatly because of the great work he's doing. And you know, we send our magazines in there, and you know, people tell me all the time, Brother Jesse, I mean, you, you didn't forget about us. Well, we don't forget about nobody because neither did Jesus. That's right. And we're called to reach people and change lives one soul at a time. And many of those one souls are watching us through the broadcast Amen. or they're getting our products, sharing them with their Amen. other prisoner friends. And God is making an impact. We Praise get letters Lord. every day with people, their lives are changed. Amen. Turn around. In fact, we meet many of them after they come out of prison. Amen. And their lives have been changed and they get to, we get to connect with them. And it's just such a blessing of the Lord to see how God can take a person who has really went off the rails and make them a preacher of the gospel. And I'm talking about serious. And I'm, not, I'm not talking about jailhouse religion. I'm talking about being born again through the power of 
God's word. See, that's a lot of things we do that we never talk about. And all these years we've been on television, we never talk about those things. You know, it's the same thing with our missions program. We do a lot of missions, but we never talk about it. And the reason why, we don't want to move people emotionally to do things. What we want to do is move people to toward Jesus Christ and him crucified. And Mike is such a blessing. Him and Shanine doing a phenomenal work of the Lord. And in just a minute, I want to watch a video with you. Together, we're going to turn around and watch a video, and you're going to be blessed by this. And I'm going to tell you something. I mean, these people were rough, but once Jesus comes in your heart, you change. And the perfect example of that was the Apostle Paul. Oh, yeah. He was a killer, but God turned him into an apostle of love. So turn with me right now. We're going to watch this screen behind us, and we're going to watch this wonderful video together. And I believe you're going to be blessed. Let's do it now. Let me just say, can I say something else? About, you know, one of the many blessings here with Mike Ward Ministries is uh, having Jesse. I can pick up the phone at any time. Jesse and Kathy and talk to them for a prayer. I don't do it very often because I respect their time. But having that privilege means more than I could put in words. And, it, and the reason for it, who else travels more than Jesse DePlantis? Who else preaches more? He is the epitome of non-stop. He's been there, he's done that, and it's a blessing to know that when I'm just having those moments, and I, I have those moments, and, and the deal is, is he always calls me back and talks to them without fail. And that means the absolute world to me because I only have a few of those. I've tried many others, but didn't get the interest. And for my wife and I to have that covering, you know they're there, just absolutely means the world to this ministry, to us personally, yeah. I tell you, Mike Barber is such a wonderful man. You know, a lot of people don't realize what we do in our ministry. Did you see me preaching and say, he's funny? But let me tell you something. Satan's not funny. No. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But through Mike Barber Ministries, this ministry supports them faithfully because we believe in them. We believe that we need to touch the people that the world wants to forget. Because once we touch them people, it's amazing. They come out as preachers. I mean, I mean, it's amazing yeah, to me. We've yeah, met them. Yeah, we met. They come to our meetings and they say, man, you know, you helped me. Well, all I did was do what the Lord said. He said, go to the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yeah, and we do that through lots of different voices and just one of those voices is Mike Barber. We've been supporting yes. them for over 20 years, and it's a fruitful ministry. Amen. We're so honored to be a part of it. You know, God connects people on purpose for Amen. His purpose, and we have like precious faith and because we believe <laughs> in reaching people, changing lives, one soul at a time. You know, we don't just say that. That is our vision, and we fellowship with that vision. We do reach people. We do. We touch them and minister to them because people are very important. If Jesus never forgot me when I was a sinner, I don't forget sinners. Now, I don't let them stay sinners. What I do is change them with the power of God's word. Hallelujah. Christ comes in their life and just touches them and blesses them. I tell you, Mike and Shanine, and if you want to know more about Mike Barber Ministries, look him up on the website. I'm telling you, that is a wonderful man doing some wonderful things. Yes. And thank you for saying those nice things. You know, he's one of my spiritual sons. You know, how come my sons are always bigger than me? I just don't <laughs> understand that. You know, my, I always wanted to be a football player, but you know what they use me for? To hold the dummies. And, he did, and, run carry, the dummies. The, and carry the water. And carry the water. They run, they run, run over the dummies, they run over to me. <laughs> it would run. It would but just, it takes a team, Jesse. Come on, it, it takes, takes a, a team. team. I love it. It <laughs> takes a village. Glory to God, like they say. You know, Kathy, we're approaching Easter, and we're going to be airing my message. The resurrection, a place of life, a place of comfort, and a place of hope. It's also this month's partner offer, so we want to show you a clip of it right now. You're going to be blessed. Let me tell you something about Easter. I love Easter because if Jesus wouldn't have rose from the dead, this would have been just another religion. Mm -hmm. Think about that. My God, the only one of all the religions in the world, Jesus rose from the dead, and Kathy, he's coming back. Amen, amen. <laughs> it's the most exciting time of the year. It's the most exciting. It is a blessing to God. So stay right there and watch with this, this clip. You're going to be blessed. And my God, let me just say it. Happy Easter before Easter comes. Watch this and be blessed right now. Can I have your imagination for a few minutes? May I have that? I want to paint a picture here. I want to talk about the resurrection as a place of life. The resurrection as a place of comfort. The resurrection as a place of hope. So if you're writing down some notes, take this down. 
The first day of the week is a day of mighty memories. Now, let me have your imagination. Let me picture something here. It's the day of redemption. What we are celebrating today is redemption. You understand what I'm saying? Redeemed from what? From everything. Put back now into position where we're supposed to be. Simply because of what Jesus did. And notice he had to start with the woman. How will women wear these great fur? Why is that? Because he preferred the women over men? No. And actually in that day, women were a lower class than men. No, but what he did was he corrected immediately everything that happened. Because women have been blamed for that since the day Eve gave that apple to Adam. Isn't that something? So he said, okay, I'm going to let y'all see me first resurrected. Shout, ladies, I just set you free. Think about that. He didn't call Peter to come see him because Peter didn't believe it. They were all in the house afraid. But women came down there and crying with some spices to anoint his body. See, they didn't really believe it neither. But see, Jesus said, that's all right. I'm going to show all the unbelievers just how alive I am. So notice this. The first day of the week is a day of mighty memories. What are you remembering today? Are you remembering the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ? They are mighty memories. Write this down. The resurrection was not hurried over. It took three days to pay our price for redemption. I hope you're enjoying the message, the resurrection, a place of life, a place of comfort, a place of hope. I hope you order this message. Think about Jesus. You know, he was fearless, man. He wasn't afraid of the crucifixion. But my God, he came out that grave. You'll see that wherever you are in your relationship with Christ, God is calling you higher. He wants you coming on up, my God, to where he is. He wants you to live every day in the place of his resurrection power. Now, anybody that can be raised from the dead has got some power. It's a place that's overflowing with life, overflowing with comfort, and overflowing with hope. That's what we preach today. Now, you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, before I was born again, I was dead. I was dead. To, I mean, I didn't know nothing about God, but when Christ came, and I, 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 when he rose, I rose with him when I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's what this ministry does. As I've said it so many times in the past, we reach people. We change lives one soul at a time. Your faithful financial partnership helps us to do that. We have been debt-free since 1982. My ministry is debt-free. My foreign offices are debt-free. Me and Kathy are personally debt-free. So whatever you send, 100% of it goes into world evangelism. That's what it's about. And I'm going to ask you to be a partner today if you're not a partner. And if you are a partner, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for helping us do what God has called us to do. We've been doing this for 41 years years full time. Here's the miracle. We've never had a financial deficit. Why? God Almighty and you. You listen to God. And I tell you what, in all those years, I've never had a scandal. My ministry is sexually pure and financially pure. Now, we've had some people lie about us, like last year about all that television and jets and things. That's all been retracted. That's all been wrong. But God helped us and no one, I'm going to tell you something, it didn't hurt us one bit at all because we didn't do nothing wrong. And that was just such a blessing. So thank you for helping us today to reach people. So do something right now. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, the anointing of increase is on me. I am not a poor man. Why? I mean, I started out poor, but what happened was, let me tell you something, I didn't understand the laws of sowing and reaping. I just thought you give and don't expect nothing in return. But when I read the Bible, I found out that what you sow, you reap, and God began to bless us. So we're able to do more for more people. And me and Kathy are partners to this ministry also. So thank you for being a partner. My visionary conference is coming next week. What a blessing of God. You still have time to make your plans to be here. It's Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night, April 11th, and Friday, April the 12th. My God, you're going to be blessed right here at JDM International Headquarters in Destrehan, Louisiana. That's a suburb of New Orleans. All registration and admission are absolutely free. Go to JDM.org for all the information. You'll be blessed. Now stay right there. I'll be right back. I want to show you a few things that are happening, and you're going to be blessed. Thanks for being a partner to this ministry. Light is an absolutely essential thing for vision. It's just amazing to be able to come here and see in person. If you're thinking about coming, make it a priority to come because your vision will be stretched. 
Bring your staff, bring your team, let them catch that vision. I will complete my destiny and reach my destination. Jesse Duplantis' 2019 Visionary Conference, April 11th and 12th at JDM International Headquarters. Register online today at JDM.org. Jesse and Kathy Duplantis are coming to Ireland and the United Kingdom. May 22nd in Dublin, Ireland. May 24th in Edinburgh, Scotland. May 25th in London, England. And on May 26th in Warminster, England and Ballymena, Northern Ireland. Don't miss these 2019 international meetings. Find out all the details at JDM.org. I hope you enjoyed today's program. You know, let me tell you something. God wants all of his children to be free. Maybe you're not behind bars, but is a chain keeping you from your destiny? Listen, when you were born again, Jesus broke all bondage off of you. That's spiritual, physical, and financial. That means you have the power to live totally free and stay free. See, some people say, well, I got free, but I'm back in. No, no, you can stay free because of the power of attorney to use the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you right now. Can I do that? Father, in Jesus' name, I come boldly through the throne of grace with these petitions and supplications with thanksgiving. Lord, I ask you to bless people spiritually, physically, financially, Lord. Let them know that whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And it's not a feeling, it's faith that produces great feelings about you and for you. Father, I thank you for touching people people and just ministering to them. If they're physically sick, we break those bonds of sickness because you took our infirmity, you bore our sickness, and by your stripes we are healed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I just get excited when I pray for you. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I don't care if you got cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, crippling all that, whatever. Everything named bows at the name of Jesus. That's what was in that prayer. Ooh, and the Bible says, if two of you agree, well, you one, I'm two. I'll be you two. Come on, Jesus. I'll be you two. I'll just believe with you, and God will minister greatly to you. Now, tune in next week for another great program where we show you some of the fruit of our prison ministry. See, I believe that we don't forget the forgettable. People, you know, when people go to prison, they just throw them away. No, we don't throw nobody away because Jesus didn't throw anybody away. And that's the kind of ministry we are. We do it constantly. We love people because people need to know Jesus. Once again, partners, thank you for helping me. Thank you for supporting this ministry. Your faithful financial support is so powerful. For every dollar you send, we believe God for a soul into the kingdom. And we are workers and we're getting it done. Until next week, this is Jesse the Plan saying I love you. See you soon. Bye-bye. A stronghold is a wrong thought pattern. Right. That's what Jesse did for me. He changed my thought pattern. Right. I was thinking this way consistently, right. and then he's he transformed me into a different thinker. And so when I look at things, I got two choices: look at it the way the world looks at it, look at it the way kind of I think, or just the way God thinks, and then remove all impossibility. You know, now everything becomes possible.